uh, what I want to do is bring out now uh, the Dalit Insta trackpad data. The 84 seats that are reserved for Dalits, in these seats, let's see what's happening. Because one of the things that the post poll data <coughs> indicates, which is very interesting, is that the Jatav vote is actually wearing away from the Dalit parties like the BSP and the younger Jatavs especially are choosing to vote for the BJP. 65% is the NDA strike rate on the Dalit seats. They're leading in 40 out of the 84, they're leading in 26 uh, seats. The Congress Alliance is leading on seven. We so far have trends for 40 out of 84 seats. And this would be very interesting. Yes, Karan. There's something again that's very interesting. Have you noticed that 60% figure? It came up when you looked at the urban votes. It <laughs> came up when you looked world. at rural. Yeah. It comes up with Dalit. It comes up with Muslim. Is there something about the fact that no matter which category you look at, and we've looked at four, the BJP seems to be taking 60 to 65% of the vote? The, this is the, the identity politics that we have been talking about. The problem with that is an exclusivist kind of approach. I think every party in India, including BSP, they tried to strike a Brahmin <coughs> Dalit coalition. Now what we are seeing now with the strike rate being the same, more or less, between 60 and 65, I, I think we are seeing convergence of voting pattern. <coughs> Fairly soon you will find it doesn't really matter, it's an irrelevant question to ask, are you a Muslim, are you a Brahmin, are you a Jatav, you will be asking who are you voting for. And that's what I, we are seeing. Ravi Shankar Prasad of the BJP speaking on the initial trend so far. 293, 295 trends available. Let's listen to what Ravi Shankar said. In Congress. We're hearing the that Meera Kumar, the speaker in the last Lok Sabha, is trailing in her constituency of Sasaram. Parneet Kaur is trailing in Patiala. Uh, that's, that's, the, that's where she comes from. She's married into the royal family of Patiala. This counting day morning and the trends are coming in thick and fast. The NDA leading on 186 seats out of 314 for which trends are currently available. I want to take a look first at the national picture as it stands this morning. The UPA leading only on 58 seats. Here it is, the national picture up on your screen now. Let's just take this one by one. 315 seats are the trends that we have. These are pictures, of course, from Ahmedabad, where celebrations have already started. The BJP jubilant, and they have reason to be jubilant as well. Uh, the BJP currently leading on 186 seats, up 96 from last time. Uh, the Congress Alliance on 58, down 83 from last time. Others at 72. Those are the initial trends. And if we can have the Insta trackpad data up, then we'll be able to show you on a map of India where these initial trends are coming from. Because the initial trend graphics, and here it is now, uh, if we can just zoom in over here and explain this to our viewers, most of the initial trends are actually coming in from the west. It's the west and the north, especially the west. <coughs> Rajasthan, Gujarat, parts of Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra, completely colored orange current. The interesting thing is that you have very few trends from Andhra, Tamil Nadu, Orissa and that whole eastern belt. Yes. Right? So it's possible that in fact what we are seeing uh, needs to be corroborated or may end up being contradicted but that confirmation that's missing from the east is still required. Yes, the, we haven't Rahul got too many trends so far from the south, we haven't got too many trends from the east. It's mostly in the west and the west is being painted saffron this morning. As you, as you were discussing yesterday's show, in any case, we are not expecting BJP gains yes. except from the north and the west. Really? In fact, we are expecting BJP NDA to do worse in the south by about two seats, if I remember no, from right. From 26 to 28, you are expecting them to go, to up, by go up by two And east also, we are expecting it to remain constant. So what you are seeing is basically the consolidation of BJP hold and NDA hold in the north and the west, as was expected from the opinion poll. But Dr. Lahiri, shed light on something. One of the things that we've noticed is that early leads, and there are only early leads in Bengal, which is in the east, suggest that the BJP seems to do being quite well. But how reflective of the final outcome would that be? Because these are early stages. Would the BJP doing well in an early stage suggest that, in fact, we've got a harbinger of a major change in the Bengal vote or is it now <coughs> too early and therefore deceptive to conclude? What you have asked is a very important question. I'll be very surprised if BJP's tally goes up beyond one or two in West Bengal. 
But I'll be equally surprised if BJP's vote share doesn't go up from around 6% to about 14, 15, 16%. But there are two very interesting things we are hearing, Karan. One, Kamal Nath is trailing in Chindwara. Good. Rahul Gandhi continues to trail in Ameti. Chindwara is really like the independent republic of Kamal Nath. Yeah. He's never lost in 30 years from there. He's, he's lost once. No, he's lost, he's he's lost, lost once. once. Yes. When he replaced his wife. That's right. His yeah. wife won the, uh, the post Tawala election. His wife won. He then replaced his wife, lost that election. But otherwise, it's his pocket borough. It's his rivalry, if you will. But you know, Chindwara had one of the highest turnouts this time around 79.05. In early assessments, the Times of India claimed it may have been the highest voting constituency in the country. That may be questionable. Yeah. But if it has had a high turnout, that is again an indication that people are not coming out to endorse him, but, but perhaps vote against him. I have a very Robert interesting Robert data set on the screen. talking right. about max of 30,000 votes in a, con in a constituency where there were about 5 lakh votes polled. Sure, absolutely. We're still, we'll still oh, these stage. are only initial so, leads, yeah. but that's just what we're one, focused Just one of the things over there, look at UP. Um, UP, it looks like the BJP is outperforming the exit polls. They have 30 out of 47. So it looks like they're, you know, you could be seeing some, okay. you could be Here, seeing them getting a huge. Here's a very interesting in data point I want to look at, and that has to do with Congress plus sitting seats. Mm -hmm. So this is where UPA MPs won in the last Lok Sabha elections. Just look at how low their retention ratio is. Just 38 percent of the seats where UPA MPs won last time, uh, they're leading on right now, uh, whereas the NDA on those seats is leading on 37, 25. Uh, a plug percent plug of those seats actually going plug to plug the plug other. Shobha Oza from the Congress party is joining us. Rahul Mehra is with us this morning. And we spoke of what's happening in Uttar Pradesh. We can take those figures now because in Uttar Pradesh, the BJP in the initial trend so far seems to be outperforming uh, the post poll surveys. Let's take a look at the figures because we've got trends now. For 48 out of the 80 seats of Uttar Pradesh, uh, the NDA leading on 33 yeah. of those, a gain of 24 over the last time. Uh, the UPA leading on 7 down, 11 from last time. The SP gaining, uh, leading on 5 down, 8. The BSP leading on 3 down, 5. Which essentially suggests, Karan, that there's a possibility that the BJP could do even better than what the exit polls had predicted. Particularly on that basis.